everyone. We have the filmmakers here with us tonight, and we have a special uh, guest speaker who's a local Mayan activist, um, Mateo Pablo, and I'd like to invite the three of them up, Frauke, Eric, and Pablo, up to the stage to just uh, say a few words before we get started. Very happy to be here in Montreal today um, with Pablo and Eric. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised how many people came. That makes me really happy. And also that I did a program called uh, Divine Interventions. I think our Mayan friends who are the protagonists of the film would really like that. And um, yeah, we will be here after the film to answer your question. Hoy día tenemos el fenómeno de la recurrencia de las fechas iniciales de la cuenta larga. No tenemos mucha evidencia física que los mayas de antigüedad pensaban que el mundo se iba a acabar. Sí me da mucha tristeza, Maudelia, de cómo, de cómo la tierra, imagínate. Lo que yo escuchaba es que esta mina es la más grande de Centroamérica. O sea, ¿cuándo los, los pobladores de aquí, o sea, nunca se les ocurriría sacar el oro, sacar la tierra, porque eso, eso es de la tierra? officially known. It was just that Alonso, our protagonist, uh, had this big suspicion that that was happening in this cement factory. And that's why he, why he went in with us illegally and he just confirmed what he, he thought. But I think the official archaeological institute, the INA in Mexico, um, they, they don't publish that. That's not common knowledge or so. That was more um, a coincidence that that was came out. I mean, there are the big Mayan sites, of course, like Palenque. Um, they are heritage and they are museums today, and and they would never destroy them. But I think, in in a small scale, these things are happening. The point of this film, really, I think, is to let, and and maybe one of the more radical things we did with this film was to let the Maya speak for themselves, that there's no narration, there's no commentary from the outside, that everything that you hear is from the Maya themselves. And we try to include that also in the presentations of the film wherever we go. And for that reason, we're, we're very happy to have Pablo Mateo here today to be able to represent the Mayan community in a way that we can't. I and mean, we can answer a lot of your questions, but he can answer them even better than, than we can from the heart. So Mr. Mateo was saying that uh, unfortunately the government doesn't really care for the, uh, besides the big temple, which is protected as you mentioned also, uh, the smaller temples are indeed in danger, uh, as well as the population surrounding it, that the governments aren't really doing their job in caring for the human and the environment in those areas, and um, it's unfortunate that that is happening in uh, Guatemala, Guatemala, sorry. It is, as we saw in the movie, uh, done by Canadian companies. I'd like to add something to that, and that is that uh, it's not just Canadian companies. And uh, I mean, I'm an American, so we're usually people who feel guilty or should feel guilty for a hell of a lot of things. But in this case, you've actually usurped us, and that means that within five years, between 2001 and 2005, Canada purchased almost 10% of Guatemala, mining rights to 10% of Guatemala. So what you're seeing is just the start of what's going to happen in Guatemala. And that's what, they, that's what they're talking about when they're on top of the mine saying you're going to see this go all the way down to Honduras, and that's in fact happening. 
This contract that happened with the with the mine that you see there was uh, the contract was negotiated through the World Bank, which meant that uh, Guatemalans get one percent of the profit from this mine at the time that this was negotiated. Which means that half of it goes to Guat corrupt Guatemalan polit politicians, the other half goes to the community, which means that they never see it. Which means it's only for the roads going to the mine. So this is a horrendous situation. 97% is on indigenous land. And Amnesty International says that of the 97 polls that they took in various communities where these mines were there, all but two rejected the mine. They didn't want it there. So that there's no, there's no consent for this. Um, I guess what I have to say is, I mean, is, is just have, is the specific of what you see in the film is that this is a really horrendous thing that Canadians need need to change. And again, I say that as an as an American, and I know we need to change a hell of a lot of things. But this is something that's a specific Canadian problem, and it's one of the reasons we're we're extremely happy to see you here today. And also to say that we, we need your help to change this. I mean, this is something that I think Canadians really can change. And we've shown this film and now in 15 film festivals in, in Canada, and it's done extremely well. And we're very heartened by that because we think that there is some chance that, I mean, the indignation that I see from Canadians needs to be reflected in your government. I mean, I realize this isn't an easy thing, and I, of course, went through the Bush administration myself. But um, I think it can change, and uh, we, we need your help, or Guatemalans really need your help. Well, there's some in Honduras and some in, excuse me, in, uh, in El Salvador, but the vast majority are in, in Guatemala, and then to a lesser degree in uh, the Yucatan, which is in Mexico, and Chiapas, which is also in Mexico. He says yes. He, they were, he was condemned to seven years. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, system in Guatemala, the justice system, the legal system, um, is corrupt. So that's how it works uh, in Guatemala. Unfortunately, um, Mr. Mateo Pablo is one of the survivors of one of those massacres. Um, he's been portrayed in uh, Marielle Davis's movie uh, Haunted Land. And he says, the legal process is about to start again. Unfortunately, it's been annulled what had been done. Uh, however, uh, the population does know that uh, he's the responsible one uh, and that he should be condemned. And so he is asking for our support, uh, everyone, in uh, making this issue heard in Guatemala. I mean, the, the what, uh, best known is probably Amnesty International Canada. I mean, they are fighting against the mining in, in Guatemala. And they also, um, when our film screened last year in the Vancouver International Film Festival, they flew up Flory, uh, our Guatemaltecan protagonist, and had many um, events with her, with discussions and uh, and that was really great. So that is the one organization in Canada which comes to my mind, but I'm sure there are more, but probably also Pablo would know. Mr. Uh, Mateo said that uh, indeed there are a few organizations, Amnesty International, uh, Projet Compagnement Guatemala Quebec here in Quebec, also a Comité uh, de Solidarité avec l'Amérique Latine, CCDAL, and Social Justice Committee also and uh, that are involved in Guatemala, Mexico, but also Honduras. And then he brings us to uh, think about the environment. They said those, those people, um, the indigenous people of those countries, are very, yes, indeed, um, worried about the environmental impacts. But he says, if we think about it, it's really an invitation to all of us. We do breathe the same air as indigenous people. So the environmental issues are really everyone's issues. I, 
I also wanted to say that um, we really like to get this film on CBC. So if you have contacts at CBC, let them know what, what you've seen and what you think. Um, the other thing that we, we were told that there may be some people from Idle No More and we're always interested in working with Idle No More and if they want to talk to us after this, we'd love to talk to you. Uh, so he says the Guatemalan population really does not accept uh, what is going on with these mining companies, uh, that there has been public hearings and that people were mostly not in favor of these projects. And so uh, the military force has to be used um, to kind of protect, he says indeed, that the co mining companies, they're not on the population side, they're obviously on the mining company side, as well as the police. And there was also in the north part a hydroelectricity, Spanish, uh, Compañía de Electro Hidroelectricidad Española. Okay, hydroelectricity, uh, Spanish company in the north, and they are doing the same thing. They are imposing their project on the population. My suggestion is also that we don't use the word civil war when it comes to Guatemala because it's an outright genocide. And it's been shown over and over and over again and to call it a civil war. I mean, I know you meant well, believe me. But it's really important to call it what it is, and that it was a genocide of the Mayan people. And you feel that, of course, they are reliving all the violence that they have lived previously. Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. And um, I was. I've been really impressed because I was following the the, the growing um, movement of I don't know more here in Canada, and it seems as a, I don't know how how you see that, but for me, from I live in Germany, it seems like it's a huge amount of people who, who seem to follow this movement, and also a lot of uh, international solidarity from other ind uh, indigenous groups all over the world. So I'm very curious to see how this will develop. <laughs> I think one of the things we wanted to do with our film is that uh, suggest a possible alliance, particularly between environmental groups, human rights groups, and indigenous people, which is, is something that, especially in the United States, has been very, very slow in coming, is to understand what an enormous resource indigenous people are, and, and particularly in Canada, of course, where you have many more indigenous people than uh, we do in the United States, but also that those links can extend all the way down to South America, that those people really are there, they're still there, they're, they may be invisible, but they're very much there, and if you can sit, I mean, and it, it requires a lot of sitting and patience, you can make those connections. I mean, they may not be exactly what you expect, but if you have the time and the patience, you can make those connections, and I, I think that that's a, a huge, um, I think maybe that's our, it may even be our only hope, actually, of saving this planet, in my mind, is to make that alliance with the people who actually live there.